Okay. So we're giving a pretty light treatment of this stuff. Um, that's mostly because you you pretty much already are following the right practices. Um, and so you know, today's lecture will actually be probably a little short, but we do have a, some more to get through here. So all of this stuff um, can be used to define what's called a normal form. Um, a normal form is basically a set of rules, and there are multiple normal forms. So like first normal form, second normal form. Um, these, these help you answer the question, should you decompose your tables or not? They also help you say, you know, somebody says, yeah, my database is in first normal form. Then you can say, okay, I immediately know what that means. Uh, certain rules hold for every, every relation in your database. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about first normal form and voice cod normal form. In between those are second normal form and third normal form. So here's first normal form, which was like the number one rule I gave you on day one is that all attributes are atomic, meaning you can't have a list or an array or a set or anything like that in a field. That was one of the possible options for the, for the question, what if somebody checks out multiple books? Well, they make it an array. You know, uh, Ron has an array of books that he's checked out. That would be violating the very first normal form. And that's all first normal form is. We solved that problem by decomposing tables. Um, so there's second normal form, third normal form, which we won't really get into much um, because first normal form, sorry, second normal form requires first normal form plus some additional rules, and then third normal form is second normal form plus some additional rules. We'll talk more about Boyce Cod normal form, which is could in spirit kind of be called like fourth, uh, it, not really, but it, it, voice cod normal form is third normal form plus more. And turns out it's actually even easier to, easier to describe and just talk about voice cod normal form, so we will. And it's just named after its inventors. Um, okay. So what is BCNF? I'll give the, um, kind of more formal definition, and then I'll give the more English definition, as I, as I did before. So some relation R with functional dependencies F is in BCNF if, um, for every functional dependency in the closure, so remember, F means I, I know about, say, a couple of functional dependencies. Use Armstrong's axioms to compute the closure. All of the other ones you can infer using those rules. So for every one of those functional dependencies, um, if it's a trivial functional dependency, or if the thing on the left of the, the dependency is a super key, then your table is in voice cod normal form. So it's the long-winded way of saying it. Um, one kind of simpler way to say this is the only constraints you put on your table are super key constraints. So let's look at that more in English. Um, every field of every row, uh, you cannot, you cannot guess its value using only functional dependencies. You cannot infer its value. So let's look at this. Um, we know that there, we know some of the functional dependencies. We know that there is one from GPA2 funds. Can we guess the value of these question marks here? Can we guess the funding that Malfoy is receiving? Yes, we can infer that value given other information in the table plus the functional dependency. 
Since we can infer that value, that means that this is not in Boyce-Codd normal form. That's, and that's basically the problem we were trying to solve is we don't need to store all these duplicate, duplicate fund mappings. Um, if I know someone's GPA, I can infer their funds, so I don't need to save the funds along with that row. Okay, after I have uh, decomposed the table, could I remove any cell from either of these tables and, and then be able to guess its value? Let's pick one. Let's say, let's say I remove that cell. Could I infer its value? No. Even knowing all of the functional dependencies that I have and all of the other information, it doesn't tell me Ron's birthday. Um, let's pick another one. If I remove that cell, can I infer its value? No. Same thing goes for a cell on the left side here. Like, if I didn't know that, then I... If that's not in the table, then I don't know its value. One thing you might be kind of thinking is, well, what if I remove that? Um, that's kind of, a, kind of a gray area. So the way that I have drawn this table where I, I know that the primary key is UID, so this table is essentially the primary index. The primary index is ordered based on primary key. We have one, two, and then a skip, and then four and five. You could technically infer that they're, the only thing that could be there is a three, but that's not really what we're talking about. That um, we can't really infer that. And if what if there, what if these were not sequential? What if it went one, two, and then seventeen, eighteen? We don't know what's in between the two and the seventeen. If you removed every UID, um, you, you, you do this one, one field at a time. Yeah. So, like, if you removed, I mean, but, but the same logic extends to that. If you removed every UID, could you infer all of the UIDs? No, and you couldn't infer any of the UIDs. Um, but even you know, just doing it one cell at a time, we that's kind of what we what we look at in determining voice code normal form. So this is the more like pictorial example way of describing this. This is more useful when you're doing kind of more abstract analysis, um, and you you don't have the luxury of like drawing drawing tables with actual data in them. So if we now have a dependency on name and GPA, this would not be in um, this form. If you had a functional dependency from name to GPA. So if I said name determines GPA. Let's see, we have, yeah, we do have a violation of that. Um, so if, like, if that was a functional dependency, then we could take anyone, anyone's GPA and cross it out, and we could infer its value if we, you know, somehow knew somebody else named Harry had to have the same GPA 3.9. Yes, that would be violating voice code normal form. So to fix that, we would have to make, we'd have to decompose again. Yeah, in the book, there is only one person with that name. Um, but I don't actually have last names here. I'm sure there's someone else in that universe with the name Harry. No? <laughs> okay. 
Bad example, then. <laughs> okay, so since we cannot guess if any of these values were removed, we could not guess its value, the data would be lost. That means that this is in voice by normal form. Uh, that combined with the fact that it is also first normal form, second and third. So first normal form would mean, like I cannot put any kind of tuple here, like maybe I wanted to combine the GPA with the funds into one row. That violates first normal form. So that would also violate BC in it. Now let's look at this using the formal definition of BCNF rather than that uh, more abstract kind of high level way of looking at it. Um, so as we saw, the formal definition is um, all functional dependencies either have to be trivial or the thing on the left of the dependency has to be a super key. So the functional dependencies we know are uh, UID determines everything else and we know that because UID is a key. So um, I'll abbreviate with just single letters. So UID determines name, date of birth, GPA, and funds. And in other words, that just means I cannot have uh, two rows with the same U, same UID, and with different uh, anything else. So I couldn't have like two fives where one of them is named um, you know, Ginny and one of them is named something else. And that's just because UID is a key. The other functional dependency we have is uh, the one, that one we defined previously where we want GPA to determine funds. Okay, so we'll look at both of those. Um, let's start by kind of looking at the closure of this first one, the, the UID one. And there are lots of things here using Armstrong's axioms and those couple additional properties we talked about uh, right after the axioms. Um, so for example, we could do uh, UID determines name, um, UID determines date of birth, or UID determines anything really. And that one's, that's kind of the obvious one. Um, none of these are going to violate voice code normal form because UID is a super key. Um, we could, we could do that combined with augmentation to say something like um, UID plus GPA determines name plus GPA. And this also does not violate voice code normal form because UID plus GPA is still a super key. Since UID itself is a super key, then UID plus anything is a super key. So this functional dependency is not violating BCNF um, due to due to that, it's, it's a super key. Um, and then we also, we don't really have to look at, um, using reflexivity, we could say that like uh, name plus date of birth determines name. And that's just because this is a superset of this. So it's, it's a trivial functional dependency. Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of what reflexivity means is it, it defines trivial functional dependencies, and we don't have to worry about trivial FDs. So we, you know, we could keep going. I'm not going to compute the full closure, um, but we, we can see that this is not going to produce any functional dependencies that are going to violate voice code normal form due to either being creating trivial functional dependencies or by the thing on the left being a super key. So let's look at uh, this other one now. Grade determines, um, or GPA determines funds. Well, we don't even have to start expanding that into the closure of it because it by itself is already a violation because GPA is not a super key. Um, we have not defined it to be a super key in this table and we can already see that there are duplicates there. Um, we can, anyone you know can have the same GPA as anyone else, so it's not a super key. What we would need to do then is split the table so that 
the so that g g is a super key in the other table and we can allow it to be uh, a non super key in this table so it turns out in order to decide or to determine whether a table is in bcnf or not um, we don't usually have to compute the full closure. We're going to be given some functional dependencies. So we knew these two. Um, those, those are called the basis. Those are the ones we know. And we started computing the closure of U. And you know we don't actually really need to because U, the thing on the left, is already a super key. We don't need to go any further than that. Um, for this other one, we quickly saw that the thing on the left is not a super key, and that's as far as we needed to go. Um, alternatively, you can usually figure it out just by thinking about it in terms of uh, can we infer a value using functional dependencies alone and the other rows in the table. Okay, um, so the point of this, one of the points of this is was eliminating duplicate information. Um, you're still going to potentially have duplicate information. Like I have two 1980s stored in here. But there's no way that decomposition would make this any better. You know, if I tried to make some table that maps UID to date of birth or something, then I'm duplicating UIDs unnecessarily. So, yes, this is duplicate information, but this is not something that can be solved with decomposition. And that's just the, the nature of two people can have the same birth date or two people can have the same name. Okay. Um, so, so Boyce-Codd normal form lets us say if my tables are all in BCNF, this kind of gives us a reassurance that redundancy is um, either basically eliminated as much as it can possibly be, or very limited. And these update, insert, and delete anomalies are, are gone. So if I change, in this example now, if I need to change somebody's name, there is exactly one place where I change their name. If I change somebody's um, GPA, there is one place where I change it. And then changing their GPA kind of automatically changes their funding without having to go and change another field. Okay, so your LMS tables are probably pretty close to BCNF, if not actually BCNF. Just based on, I've kind of given you all of these rules throughout the semester without formally naming them and, and being able to analyze them like this. There may be some small violations of BCNF in some of your tables. And um, if you want to go look for those, like, an, you know, like a little uh, functional dependency hunt, um, that'd be a good exercise. But you do not have to turn, you do not have to refine your tables at this point to make them BCNF if they're not. Yep. How does this, I mean, I'm assuming this works for many to many relationship tables. Uh, for many to many, that, that relationship set would be turned into its own table. You'd, you would have a, you would have three tables for a many to many relationship. You have the entities on the left and right plus a table for the relationship itself. And yeah, this, as long as you know all of your functional dependencies and decomposed correctly, then this works. Yeah, so, you know, before, the, basically the rules were coming from things like what are the keys, are the relationships one to many or many to many, what are the participation constraints. Um, now we have these additional possible things like this G to F functional dependency. You can't really express that in terms of participation requirements or keys or anything like that. Um, so this is kind of like a new addition to the language of describing databases 
that that helps us design things in the right way. Okay, so as I said, shorter lecture today, but that's because this pretty much wraps up relational databases. So we're going to talk about non-relational databases next week. Um, everything we've done has been strictly talking about relations, relational algebra, relational conceptual thinking. Um, you, you can throw all of that out the, out the door and there are like actual databases in use that are non-relational. And they're becoming actually more and more popular every day. They're, SQL used to just, or relational databases used to just dominate everything. Now non-relational databases are kind of looking uh, a lot more interesting. Um, but we'll talk about that next week.